Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a crazy week, so let's get to it. First of all, we had a, a really scary start to the week. We initially thought we were gonna go much lower. We were breaking the 200 DMA and uh, everything looked like it was turning downwards. And President Trump was shooting tariffs at Mexico and he was shooting tariffs at China. Everything was going to hell, basically. And in the middle of the week, Tuesday, I think it was, the Fed comes out and it basically says that it's gonna support the market, that it's gonna make sure that we keep going up, guys. And sure enough, the market starts heading higher. It's funny. The last time I saw something like this, it was, I think it was about six years ago, when, if I remember correctly, it was Ben Bernanke making Operation Twist and implementing QEs and suddenly bad news became good news and good news was good news. And so everything was good news and everything went up. And uh, I don't know if you've seen that graph, but there's this chart that shows the correlation between the market and the level of liquidity the Fed pumps into the market. So, And the correlation is strikingly strong. And uh, I think when the market understood that Chairman Powell is going to support the market, then he basically was saying that he was uh, going to make sure we keep getting higher. It was just that simple. At that point, I was, I was holding some puts as hedge, but uh, at that point I said, no, th this is it. We're going much higher. And we might go a lot higher. In fact, we might make new highs, new all-time highs. I'm, I'm not saying we're going to, but what I'm saying is that you don't fight the Fed. When the Fed says we're going higher, we're going higher. There is a risk, though. Theoretically speaking, we could see Chairman Powell pivot a little bit hawkish in the next meeting. That wouldn't be nice. I mean, the market right now is pricing a rate cut maybe as soon as the next meeting. So I think the next meeting they can get away with not raising. But the meeting after that one, there has to be a cut. The market is already pricing a cut. And so if we don't get it, or if we see that the, the Fed is suddenly turning a little bit hawkish, a little bit playing the tough guy with the market, then we could sell off really hard. However, I don't know. I don't think that we might see that because Powell already already tested the market and the market called the bluff. <laughs> and we crashed in December 2018. We all remember that, right? So I don't think he wants a repeat of that. I think he's now a, a dovish chairman, and I think he's going to support the markets no matter what. Long term, I don't know. I don't think that's sustainable. I, I like listening to a lot of people, among them Peter Schiff. He's been calling for something like this. And he says that this is not only not sustainable, but he says that eventually this is going to lead to inflation. And, you know, the typical thing that he says that and gold is going to go higher. I mean, he's a gold bug. Personally, I don't know. Could be. I think that what we'll probably see is that gold will head higher, but also cryptocurrencies. And I think, in fact, probably cryptos will hit much higher than gold. But that's my personal opinion. That's just because I think cryptos have more qualities of money than gold itself. But on the other hand, cryptos, you, you can make any cryptocurrency yourself. Like I can create one. It's not necessarily easy, but I can create one. So so there's there's a couple variables. So uh, it's, it's a difficult subject to say for sure which one's going to go higher. So I think if you're betting on that angle, you might as well hold both. Typically, you would hold between 5 and 10% as a hedge. So you could hold half and a half of gold and uh, say Bitcoin, and that would be enough. And the rest you can hold your typical portfolio holdings of stocks. But yeah, that's a little bit on the macro side. And uh, but, but one more thing I wanted to touch on, which was uh, that it seems to me that at first we thought uh, Trump was crazy and he was placing tariffs on everyone. But we now see that the guy actually is pulling off some deals. Like, first of all, I think at the beginning of the week, the guy surprises us with tariffs on Mexico. But now... We're closing the week, and uh, apparently there's a deal with Mexico. That they're going to do something to restrain their, the, the flow of people towards the United States. I don't know how that's going to work out. I haven't seen the details on that. Uh, maybe by the time this video is out, there's something more concrete on it. I don't know. It could be just a typical Trump move where he plays good cop, bad cop. He's, he likes being unpredictable, so I don't know. But it just goes to show that a bad market and bad news cycle can flip on a dime. And right now, we're, everything's good, guys, right now. But right now, we're getting higher. In fact, even China, which was a sworn enemy to the United States, they were, they were even saying they were preparing for war and all that. And just recently, I think yesterday or today, Xi Jinping comes out and says that Trump is a good friend of him. Imagine that. Trump is a good friend. And, and that he thinks they can work out some type of agreement uh, between their two countries. So it's crazy times, guys. Maybe it's the art of the deal. I haven't read it. Maybe it's a good, a good book. It's the art of the deal, guys. <laughs> I uh, have to read that one. So naturally, we're heading much higher. And also, we were somewhat oversold. And we were also at technical uh, support. So we're bouncing. I don't know how long is this going to last. It's going to be interesting to see next week how it closes. But I would say take it easy, guys. Don't try to chase this rally or anything. If you bought the dip, congratulations. I, right now, I would just sit on my hands and watch what happens. And maybe next week, Trump says we didn't reach, no, we didn't reach an agreement with Mexico. 
Or maybe he says, I don't care about Xi Jinping, tariffs are on. Or maybe Powell pivots again. Like, we don't know. So it, like everything changed in a week. So we need to wait and see what happens. Right now, I wouldn't say sell, I wouldn't say buy. Just sit on your hands, watch what happens. And uh, if we head much higher, say we start retesting the last highs we had, I would say put on some hedges, but we'll see. But okay, moving on. Even though some things are appearing, they're getting much better. The underlying economy is not that good. We saw some misses on the jobs number. I think we were expecting like 175,000 new jobs and we only had 75. It was a complete miss. Like that was an abysmal number. But as you know, right now we are in this type of market where bad news is actually good news because bad news means that the Fed will cut rates. And so if they cut rates, the market goes higher. So bad news is good news. But that doesn't mean that the economy is great. So we have to keep an eye on that. And also the retail sector, uh, it's it's getting destroyed right now. I know everything bounced this week, but overall the trend in, in the retail sector is abysmal. You have to be very careful with that. If you're buying anything that has to do with retail, I suggest you also buy some Amazon to offset the risk. And by the way, Amazon is a, is a phenomenal stock. It's In my view, it's undervalued. I think it could easily go in the near term, by, by the end of the year, I think it could easily be above 2000 and and even more than that, I think it could be 2500 easily, if not even more than that. So look into Amazon. I suggest right now, guys, with the market as it is, look for companies with no debt because everything right now is indebted. And if there is a credit crunch, you're going to want companies that have no debt. And believe it or not, the best companies right now are Amazon, growth, no debt. Facebook, growth, no debt. Apple, growth, very little debt. Like you want to look for those types of companies. And um uh, I think you'll be fine. Even if there's a credit crunch, these, these, these types of companies, they're not going to go under. It's going to be a buying opportunity and you'll be fine long term. But if you start playing with fire, purchasing these retail stocks, but a credit crunch comes along, they get wiped out. And then what do you do? You're done. So I would say take it easy, guys. Try to play it as safe as you can. Some of you might even be in cash and that's fine. There are a lot of macroeconomic risks right now going on. There's tensions with Iran. There's tensions with China. There's tensions with Mexico the possibility of runaway inflation. Now, moving on, guys, I think it's worth mentioning that Tesla is finally catching a break. If we look at the chart of Tesla, it bounced massively from 180, I think, SUF 180, to right now, I think it's above 200. So it's a good bounce. It's a long overdue bounce. But let me tell you guys, we're still in a massive downtrend. So be careful. If you already added at 180, congratulations. Maybe take something off. Some profits, no one's going to get hurt if you take some profits. I think... It's very likely we might even go lower again, test 180, and let's see if that holds. Because the truth is right now, guys, we were massively up in the market on Friday, and Tesla couldn't really get going. And so that's a, like when I saw that, I was like, oh man, come on, this is dangerous. Because think about it, it's a rally, it's a market rally, and Tesla is so oversold. If everything was normal, Tesla would have gone up like 5, 10% or something like that on Friday. But uh, we didn't see that. We saw that they reached this resistance, I think it's at 205, and it just couldn't break that. And so that is, uh, that is uh, it, it makes me worry. It makes me think that maybe we retest the lows once again and see what happens then. We'll have to see how the next week goes. I mean, if we gap up on Monday, that'd be great news. But even then, I would say until we get above the 50 DMA or the 200 DMA, we're not out of the woods, guys. So take it easy on Tesla. Don't start going all in on calls and all that because you might lose your money. In fact, I think you will probably lose your money. If you go all in on calls right now, I think you're guaranteed to lose your money because right now they're going to chop around and you're not going to want to have calls on that. They're going to kill that premium, guys. So take it easy, okay? If you're holding shares, you should be fine. If you're holding shares and you bought the dip, you should be fine. You could hold, maybe take something off and see if we reach the moving averages. But uh, we'll see. After all, the product itself is really good. And recently there was this article that showed this... Uh, this guy is driving on autopilot and it adapts to a different type of environment and it just drives it very well. And so that shows the power of the autopilot. And I have a series on it, guys. If you want to check it out, please go check it out. It's on Robotaxis and uh, what I think is the future of cars. And uh, that's, that's why I like Tesla so much. It's not necessarily because they sell cars. It is because if Tesla is the first car, the first uh, company to crack self-driving, if Tesla is the first company to do that, then this is easily worth four times what it is worth right now, easily. Because you would disrupt Uber, Lyft, you would disrupt taxis, you would disrupt competition in the auto sector. It would it would change everything, guys, and it would make it almost like a monopoly because I think right now everyone else is just so far behind, 
it's, it's not even funny. But uh, you should definitely check out my series on, 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 the Rob on Robo Taxis because you're making, if you're buying Tesla, you're making a bet. Tesla is making a bet on cameras and AI while everybody else is making a, a bet on LiDAR. And you just can't ignore that. You can't expect that everybody, all, all the guys at Google, all the guys at Chrysler, all the guys at GM, like everybody else is, is dumb and they can't see the future. You can't really think that. So you also have to realize that maybe LiDAR is a viable product if the right set of circumstances come along and if that's the case and there's no differentiation going forward in self-driving, then maybe Tesla would be in trouble. It's, it's difficult. That's why Tesla is such a speculative stock. It could, it could really pay out very well in the future. But you got to have a small position on it. Like, I can't stress this enough. I've seen, well, right now, no. But because we're bouncing and, and suddenly when we're bouncing, the bulls come out and everybody's happy and you know how it is. But uh, all these past few days, because I've been following Tesla since it was falling, uh, since the, almost 400. So I guess it's been cut in half almost. And uh, I've seen a lot of people lose a lot of money, guys. It's not funny. It's not funny. And uh, it wouldn't happen if, you, if they simply manage their positions and take it easy. But uh, I often see them taking these long out-of-the-money options and uh, going on margin and doing all this type of stuff that just doesn't make sense in general. doesn't make sense. But it, it's insane if you do it on Tesla. You're asking for trouble then. So, so that's it, guys. Uh, that's that's kind of my take on it right now. But I can tell you this. The fact that Fiat, Chrysler, and uh, Renault are even thinking about how to merge because they... They see so, so much competition in the auto sector and uh, they think they have to merge, they have to join forces to compete with other automakers, in particular Tesla, like that tells you a lot. At this point, they're probably falling behind and they're merging because they want to have more resources and a better shot at self-driving and uh, electric vehicles. That's basically it. They're simply too small on their own. They're not capable of doing it, so they have to join forces. And so it's interesting to see that Tesla keeps chugging along and keeps making bears angry, but uh, that's that's it, guys. I mean, Tesla just doesn't die, doesn't die. And I think right now, it just has to make it through until they reach full self-driving, because once they do that, that's it. It's game set and match. So uh, yeah, moving on. So uh, now I'd like to talk a little bit about Bitcoin, which, you know, it's funny. Everybody is saying, because I'm seeing a lot of videos around it, as you know, I, I suddenly picked up some interest on Bitcoin because in fact, I bought a little bit for myself. I know I shouldn't tell everybody that I bought something, but yeah, I did. And uh, and by the way, I, I bought a little because um, I think it's a good hedge against uh, hyperinflation and all that. I already mentioned that, but I think it's a good hedge. It's kind of like gold. So you might as well own some gold and some Bitcoin, unless you really don't believe in it, but that's, that's on you. But in any case, everybody seems to be uh, making this technical analysis about Bitcoin, saying that it is due for a pullback and all that. Well, here's the thing, guys. It was trading at roughly 3,000, I think. And right now it's at 8,000. So it's more than 100%. In fact, I think it's almost 200% gain because it went up to 9,000. So basically tripled. And uh, obviously there can be uh, a, a certain pullback. Like that's normal. But here's the thing. And here's what I don't really understand. Because, well, first of all, if you're buying it as a hedge and it's not a depreciating hedge, like say an option, you wouldn't necessarily care about the price of the asset you're using as a hedge. So that's... First of all, that. But say you're you're not buying it as a hedge, but you're buying it as an investment. Well, if you're buying it as an investment, then chances are your your investment thesis is that uh, Bitcoin is going to go to one million dollars or something like that. Like, that's probably your thesis, at least one hundred thousand dollars. And uh, if that's the case, even even if it goes up to twenty thousand dollars, which I think is as conservative as you'll find in the bull scenario, at least. Like even if it goes to to twenty thousand, which is retesting the last highs, like that's more than 100% gain from these levels. And uh, if that's the case, if you, you think that, you've made your own due diligence, you've looked at the fundamentals, which is basically the amount of people that are pouring money into Bitcoin and the supply and demand of Bitcoin. Like if you look into that and you think, yeah, this makes sense to me, then why do you care if you're buying it at 9,000 or 6,000 or whatever price in this range at least? You shouldn't care because you're still going to make 2x or 3x your money. So, so that's, that's the thing I don't get about what I'm recently hearing about Bitcoin, that all the technicals point to much lower and all that. I don't know. I just, I just don't see the logic. Now, of course, if you're trading, if you're trading, that, that makes sense. I understand that if you're trading. But let me tell you this, and this is not news for you, I'm sure, but like 99% of traders lose their money. So if you're trying to play cute with the market, chances are you're going to, one, lose money, and two, miss out on the bull run when it happens. 
So it's not a good idea, guys. In, in this type of scenarios, simply go dollar cost averaging into your position on Bitcoin. You'll be fine. And always remember to not go all in on Bitcoin. Don't do that. Di be diversified. I, I know maybe even if you, if you believe in Bitcoin 100% and all that, you have to realize that you could be wrong. And what if you're wrong? So you have to think about that. You have to think, well, what if I'm wrong? If I'm wrong and Bitcoin goes to zero, well, at least I have what? And that's what you have to make sure you diversify into. Maybe you say, at least I have my portfolio of $50,000. At least I have my real estate prop property over here. And so on. Like You have to think about those things. A, a good way of managing risk is always asking yourself, what's the worst case scenario of this? And uh, once, you, once you do that, you'll identify your risk. And what you do then is, you, first of all, you try to avoid that risk. And there's a few ways of doing that. But there are certain risks that are unavoidable. And so those types of risks, you will try to reduce them. And a good way of doing that is by diversifying yourself. Don't go all in. That's so easy, but just don't do it. <laughs> you'll, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. And um, yeah, so that's it about Bitcoin. I just wanted to mention one more thing about Bitcoin, though. Well, actually, two things. Like, first of all, we all know that Facebook is trying to make its own cryptocurrency, right? That, to me, that is very interesting because it's basically validating the fact that cryptocurrencies have a place in the modern world, a modern financial system. So, so that's, that's fascinating. In a way, I think it validates Bitcoin. And uh, it's, it's funny because chances are whatever coin Facebook, we'll call it the Facebook coin, whatever it is, chances are this is going to be traded, uh, like it can be pair traded with Bitcoin. I would imagine that's probably going to be the case. And that's basically going to bring a lot of flow, a lot of money into Bitcoin, if that happens. So I thought that was interesting and worth mentioning. I don't think it's going to detract from Bitcoin because here's the thing. The appeal of Bitcoin is that it is decentralized. Nobody controls it. Just by that alone, it is superior to any cryptocurrency that the government could issue or Facebook could issue or any other company could issue. Like just that fact alone makes it makes Bitcoin special. So, well, there's that. Also, at the same time, I saw some news that, that came just recently that uh, India is trying to ban cryptocurrencies, that you're you're going to go to jail for like 10 years if you own or mine or distribute some type of cryptocurrency. That is amazing, guys. That is basically the government admitting that cryptocurrencies are a risk for states because they can't control them. And the fact that we see states admitting this validates completely the usefulness of cryptocurrencies. And I think, in a way, it just makes them uh, more valuable because it's no longer something that it is theoretically dangerous for a state. It is actually true. Right now, we're seeing states being worried about that. And uh, so I think you should look into Bitcoin, definitely. There's, there's a lot of uh, cryptocurrencies. I, I won't pretend to know about them, but I think that if you're going to look into cryptocurrencies, you can't make a mistake by simply buying Bitcoin. And I think in the future, most people will think the same. And so I think it, within the cryptocurrency space, it is the safest bet. And uh, so it's within that context, obviously, no? But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. And uh, lastly, guys, you know, I've been wanting to make like something of an analysis of the Trade Desk, which is a stock that I like very much. But uh, I'm, I'm just too busy to do it. So I think I'll make a small section in this episode and uh, we'll call it, I don't know, like stock of the day or something like that. And uh, but yeah, the Trade Desk is definitely the stock of the day. It is a fantastic stock. It is um, basically what it does is programmatic advertising, which is an alternative to advertisers for advertisers instead of paying Google or Facebook to advertise within those uh, so-called wall gardens, they uh, pay to the trade desk, which what they do is they find the best places to place advertisement and, and reach the type of audiences that you want at the best price possible. So it's, uh, in a way, I think it's a much, much more efficient way of advertising. And um, it's crazy how fast this uh, company is growing. It's unbelievable. And I think there's a lot of room to grow. Now, obviously, the company is... Uh, a little bit expensive right now, but I've seen articles that say that it can easily go beyond 300. So, and you know, I can't tell you what to do with your money, but I will tell you this, look into it. You need to look into it because even if it's not good investment right now for you at this price, it could be if there's a pullback, say it falls back below 200, maybe then you can be interested. And so look into it by then, you know what you expect from the company. You have an idea of what you would be paying for it. And uh, if a pullback occurs, you simply buy. Or you, what you could do is buy something right now. Just buy a little. And if it pulls back, you buy a little more. And if it doesn't pull back, well, at least you have some skin in the game and you start making some money and you don't feel like you're missing out. So uh, 
At least that's that's how I do it. But um, anyways, guys, yeah, look into it. The trade desk it might kill Facebook. <laughs> well, I don't think so. And um, look into it. And I think that's it, guys. Thank you for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm still playing around with the format, but uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, I'm open to feedback and I hope I see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.